Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Reverend Osei Wusukovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We bless the name for another opportunity to be at his feet. And we thank God that you are here today. Now I want to remind you the virus is still around, so do take good care of yourself and may God richly bless you. Amen. We want to continue our series on the preparation for the harvest on the big catch. And I believe by now, we are expecting that God has given you a new heart. A new heart. And then we want to be searching the scriptures. Because the Bible is telling us, in our last studies, in 1 Samuel chapter number 10 and then verse number 6, he said, The Spirit of the Lord will come over thee, thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. When you go to the verse number 9, he said, And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those, those signs came to pass that day. I want you to see that God said he, he will become more a king. He was he appointed king by God. But God have to work on him to give him a new heart, a king's heart. So if God wants to use us, then he has to, first work he has to do is he work on us to give us a new heart for his assignment. And so I'm expecting that God have made you, and by now, you have what, what I call shepherd's heart. Shepherd's heart. You need a shepherd's heart to take good care of the cell, cell members. I'm praying that all of us will have shepherd's hearts to care for the lost. And we'll be out there searching for those who are lost. Amen. So let's get into the scriptures to find a few things about a shepherd's heart. Mm, a shepherd's heart. His heart. There is this passage in Psalm number 51 and then verse number 17. Psalm 51 verse 17. Very interesting. David was saying, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, I will not despise. You see, you have to have a broken heart. For instance, we are war. We are his own. He has selected us. But we have to get a new heart for his assignment. But he must do a work on us. But we have to get a right heart and a right attitude to be changed into that person which God has in mind. Hallelujah. It's a broken and the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. Let me try to explain it this way. When you are broken, that means you can be mended again. God can turn you around and do a new thing. When you visited the porter's house in Jeremiah chapter number 18, it talks about, let's visit a visit to the porter's house. Let's get there. Jeremiah 18.1. Jeremiah 18.1. It talks about the porter's house. Let, oh, read the one and three. Okay, let's go to the three. Then I went down to the porter's house. And behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. For, mm -hmm. And the vessels that he made of clay was marred in the hand of a potter, so that he made it again another vessel, as seemed good in the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this? Potter, saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. You see, the truth is that we are in the hands of God. If we want God to be here, then we have to get a broken heart. We have to be soft in his hand. Because he will always use a soft clay, the potter will use a soft clay to model that vessel he wants to. So the Spirit of the Lord will come over thee and thy life will be watered by the Spirit. But when you read this parable, Jesus talks about the old wine 
in the old wine skin in Mark chapter number 3, verse number 22. Mark 3, 22. And he says something very interesting. Mark 3, 22. He said, you don't, and the scribes which came down from Jerusalem and said, uh -huh. and no man put up new wine into old, old bottles, else the new wine do burst the, the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But new wine, it must be put into new bottles. The truth is this. Because it's a stiff-necked people. That is, they were not willing to do what God wants you to do. They were stiff-necked. They just decide we want to do this and that's it. But God called them stiff-necked people. But when we are in the house of God, he wants to give us a broken-hearted. He wants a tender-hearted. It means we are soft and we are that clay. He will shape us into what he wants us to be. And after he is shaping us, and they have done a work on that, because the scripture said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, he said, For it is God who worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. If God is remolding and shaping us and giving us a new heart for his assignment, then we need to be ready. And finally, the product that will come out should be a shepherd's heart. We need to have a heart for the lost, a heart God has worked and placed in us who is caring and full of compassion, willing to do the will of God and ready for the harvest. This is what the Lord is doing and these are our expectations. And when we have this good heart, a new heart, which God has given us, and we have a bad and a, a compassion for the lost, we will make a difference. Why? Because we have the right heart and we have the right compassion and the spirit of the Lord will flow through us and we become vessels of honor and he will use that to his own glory. Hallelujah. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you having sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good way. He is able to make all grace abound to us even as we prepare ourselves and we get ready for his work. Mm. He gives Saul king's heart. But we will be given what? Shepherd's heart. That's my prayer. May God give you a shepherd's heart. That you may be willing to care for the flock. That you are willing there out in your own corner. Taking care in your cell members. Praying for them. Meeting their needs. Helping them to stand on their feet. Teaching them the instructions of the law. Guiding in them in the thing God has prepared for them. Yes, that is the will of God. Take your place and position and begin to work in this cell work. And that's why you need to be prepared. You need God to work on your heart. You need to be willing. You need to do a whole lot of things. Hallelujah. Bless the name of our Lord. Now, we want to get into today's subject. We were, all that we went through is to remind us of where so far the things, some of the things we have covered. And then we added a few things to it. And, and I hope you are coming with war, a shepherd's heart. Because if God has worked on you, his spirit has come upon you, and like he turns all around to be a king, he has also turned you around to be what? A shepherd. You have a shepherd's heart. You are willing to take care of all the flock. You are willing to take care of that cell member. You are willing to be out there looking for the one who is lost. You will leave the 99 and go for the lost one. Yes, that is the work of a shepherd. You want to go there and find out that who are they all in. You care about them. You care about all the members of yourself. You care about that group. And God will bless you. Amen. We want to now get into our assignment. Our assignment is what the big hatch. We're moving into the territory where God has called us and planted us. And I believe you are in your local area, locality. You find yourself in a place, in a locality. And in that location where God has placed you, I want you to believe that God has given that land for you. Believe God for it. Believe God with your heart. Trust him in your heart. And pray, Lord, give me this land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you pray over this land, listen, it's a focus intensive prayer. You need to penetrate and prevail in prayer in the realm of a spirit to be able to take a land. And you need to be willing to pay that price for it. 
Because we need to be ready and God wants to use us to accomplish that. Hallelujah. But let me give you a picture in the scriptures. Let, shall we go to Exodus chapter number 17? Exodus 17, the battle of Raphidim. The battle of Raphidim. Well, Moses and Aaron and who are they sat at a mountain top with the rod of God. Are you there? Okay, let's go. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel at Raphidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men. I want you to underline that. Choose out men. <laughs> and go out, fight with Amalek tomorrow. I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. That is the instruction. Moses will sit on the, with the rod in his hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek and Moses. Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Mm -hmm. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Har stayed up his hand. And one on the one, on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hand was stayed until the going down of the sun. I want you to, this is the lesson. They stayed his hand. They helped Moses to raise his hand. Not undermine him. They stayed his hand. One on the side. That means, <laughs> I can see Aaron sitting on the who? Moses. Moses was sitting on that stone. He ran on this side, her on this side, and they held his hand. So long as his hand was up there, they held his hand to keep his hand up. So long as his hand was up there, Israel had victory. Hallelujah. And so it was a teamwork. You see, even in the spirit realm, look at how they team up to work together as a body. Moses must raise his hand, but there are a team who will stay his hand down with him. And Joshua might go to the battle, but he was not alone. He enlisted men, you see. So even in the realm of a spirit, we need a team to work with. People who agree with us. Who will have the same spirit. Who will be with us. That we team up with them and we lift up the hands of Moses. As a, so long as his hands were lifted up, they will have victory. Hallelujah. And that was it. So that is a picture in Raphidim. And Israel destroyed Amalek. And God said he will have battle with them in all generations. Praise God. Uh -huh. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a, a stone and put it under him. And he sat down. He sat down and Aaron and her stayed up his hands. The one on the other side and the other on the other side. And his hands were stayed until the going down. Of the sun. Okay, let's get to it. Praise the Lord. Now, what? and Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. You see, Joshua was at the battlefront doing the warfare. He was an army general with his men on the field fighting at Rephidim. And Moses and her and Aaron, they were on mountaintop with his hands lifted up with the rod of God in his hand. And as they lift up and stay in his hand, they have the victory. Hallelujah. It is important that we understand these principles and concepts. And God will help us to have victory. Praise the Lord. Now, that this scripture, Jesus gave this parable. And it is in Mark chapter number 3 and then verse 24. 24 to 27. Mark 3, 23, 24 to 27. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, 
That kingdom cannot stand. <laughs> if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but have an end. Mm -hmm. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goose, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his goose. Mm. Hallelujah. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goose, except he will first find a strong man, and then he will spoil his goose. You cannot go in there and make any serious impact if you do not take charge of a strong man. You can go in there and possess land, land until you bind what? The strong man. The strong man must be bound. He must be bound. And how are you going to do? Yeah, you will do it by the grace of God. And the scripture is telling us something very interesting. We need to bind a strong man. How? Now, I'm going to give you two scriptures. One is a promise. The other is an assignment. Matthew chapter number 18, verse number 18. Matthew 18, 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. Mm -hmm. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they, may, they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Mm. Hallelujah. Get it, the 20. Verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. We normally use for when we go for prayer meeting and people are not here in, we quote that scripture. But this is a serious business, it's a warfare. Hallelujah. Ah, okay. So he's saying, if two of you can agree, there must be first of all agree to touch on something. We agree in the name of the Lord to touch this community. We agree in the name of the Lord to touch that brings that rule over this area, this territorial spirit. We need to make agreement. And if we bind them in the name of Jesus Christ, they won't be bound. If we agree in the name of Jesus they will, and pray in the name of the Lord, they will be bound. Now let's go for the promise. Isaiah 49, 24 to 25. Isaiah 49, 24 to 25. That is a promise. The Lord has said, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But that says the Lord. Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with them that contend with, you, with thee. And I will save my children. The Lord said, I will contend with them that contend with thee. And I will save my children. So if we are going in there and two of us agree in the name of the Lord. We are in there for this spiritual battle call. We are going to contend with the spirit that rule this territory in the name of the Lord. The Lord has appointed us to be in these territories and to overcome. In the name of the Lord, we contend with them and do warfare. Mm, yes, we do warfare and break the yoke of the enemy. They shall be liberated. The Lord said he will contend with them that contend with thee. Those who are contending with the souls, there might be people and the saints who will arise in the name of the Lord to bind those spirits, to contend with them and break the yoke and loose them. Then people will be loose and they'll be ready for, to be saved. <laughs> he said, but that says the Lord God, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. Mm. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with them that contend with thee and I will save my children. How many people are in terrible captivity? Many sinners are in terrible captivity. In all types of addiction and all types of evil. 
Yeah, the enemy have taken over. But then we are here in this land. And God has promised I will contend with them that contend with thee. We have got a new heart. God has prepared us. And so we come and we are willing to do what God wants us to do. To operate and to work as we have been assigned. But then there are battles to be won. There are <laughs> spirits we need to contend with in the land. After we have overcome them, then the children of God can be liberated. They can be set free. They can now come out from sin. Because we contend with them that contend with thee. Because we open our spirit and heart to the Lord. And as we do this, and as we move on, God will help us. Kabunda Hatia. The time has come. And I call you church wherever you are to team up with us. Because, listen, we need to contend every location you are. They are spirit that influences life with evil, willing to destroy them. But God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But we are the people chosen of God to overcome the enemy. But remember this. God has chosen us to contend with the enemy. That is why he has given us a spirit. And he has promised us, if two of us who agree on anything, we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. We lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And that is a powerful promise. Hallelujah. Brother, you don't know who are with us. I want you to know you are not alone. Hear me, brother, sister, you are not alone. The Lord is of us. His ministering angels are standing right with here. If only we are willing and we want to move. They are there with us. As we contend them, they are, these are spiritual warfare. You will see Gabriel and, this, and Cole move into action to break every chain, to lose their captivity captive and set them free. Because Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has set me to preach. So I liberty those who are bound. You see, his spirit has come over us. The minister angels are here. And we are ready for assignment. Now it is time for warfare. It is time to contend with those spirits that hold people in sin. Those who pull them in adultery and fornication. In drunkenness and evil. Those who are planning. And the lust for money and desire for evil. Are bound in our time. Why? The demonic spirit behind it. We contend with those who contend with the souls of these young men who are only lusting and desiring for money and wealth. But listen, we have been given power in the name of our Lord. We said, the Bible said, well, what is the promise? He said, behold, I give unto you unto you all power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt me. We have power to tread on serpents and scorpions we have power in the name of the Lord. Because the one who said, I said this. All power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore in my name. So long as we are in the name of the Lord. And we are going by the marching orders of the Lord. We can overcome any stronghold. We can break any yoke. We can set people free. Because it is not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. It is a commission of the Lord. And those who are chosen and called, he empowers. And those who are empowered will overcome. And we are more than conquerors through Christ. Who strengthened us. By the spirit and the unction of the Lord, the yoke will be broken. May the spirit of the Lord come over your life. May you be turned into another man. May you be that brother who have a zeal for God. And as you agree with the brethren, in the name of the Lord, we enter into warfare. And we combine Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Like they did a refidim. We agree in the name of the Lord. And as we break the yoke of the enemy, the chains will be broken. People will be set free. And as we proclaim the name of the Lord, no one will be bound. They will be set free. Why? Because we have done the right thing. We have done what the Lord required of us. Hallelujah. Uh-uh. But that says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend. For I will contend with them that contend with thee. 
I will save my children. He said he wants to save his children. He wants to deliver them. Mm. Hallelujah. So for you find yourself in any location where you believe that God has sent you there. We invite you to join us even as we, pro- we are preparing for this great assignment. And we are this season, this week, we are entering into a seeding of war. Spiritual battle. Contending with powers of darkness. That whole people kept in captive. That uh, all evil habits shall be broken. Addiction shall be broken. You see people whose whole life have been destroyed because of drunkenness. Those on drugs. Those on marijuana. Don't, all of them. Hallelujah. Their life have been broken. But listen. As we contend with them. In faith. In the name of our Lord. As we agree. No power of darkness shall prevail. These are the last days. And the ocean of our Lord is being released upon our life. And the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. The spirit of our Lord is released upon our life. And the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. The Bible says when Jesus. He came to the. When you read Mark from chapter 1. He came to the tabernacle. And the people started. Demons started screaming. Say, Lord, are you come to destroy us before time? Why? The spirit of God was upon him. Say, you are the son of God. He said, quiet and come out of him. May we stand on our feet and cast out devil. May demon begin to scream as we walk about. Like the day when Paul got to Philippi. <laughs> that little girl who would say, hey, these are the men of God. The familiar spirit which were cast. May we be out there casting out evil spirits. Even as they come confronting us. Why? The ocean of the Lord has come upon us. These are the last days. We need to contend for souls for women and men. And bring them from the bondage. And as we do this, we will see the manifestations of these things. And God will bless us. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. Mm. And there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he, he cried out, Mark 1, mm, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. May you be the Holy One of God. May you be that servant of God, a child of God, with the ocean of God upon your life, sent by God. To deliver and set the captive free. May the ocean of the Lord be upon thee. The yoke shall be broken because of the anointing upon your life. Even as you wait and pray. As the ocean come over your life. And as you step out into your assignment. Those demons pray will scream because they know you. They know who you are. You are a child of God. You are spell filled. You are the power of God over your life. And they cannot prevail. Why? God has sent you for an assignment and they cannot stand. Hallelujah. I'm praying that you will be faithful in your calling. I'm praying for you that you understand these things and give yourself wholly to them. And no man can stand before thee. Because that's why the scripture, the promise to Joshua. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. And no man shall be able to stand before you. No man. That's a promise. No demon spirit, no manifestation shall be able to stand before you. Why? Because of the ocean, the anointing that will come upon you. You are transforming to another man by whom demon spirits will scream and go away. Hallelujah. Now listen. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold that peace and come out of him. We, may we cast out devils and may we preach Christ to others and may we encourage them to receive the Lord. Now I want to be praying with you now. God loves you so much. I'm praying that God will impart his spirit and grace upon you. That grant you boldness to stand. To challenge the powers of darkness. To overcome the wicked spirit in high places. That, don't, that rule over territories. And in any location. Father, today I pray for the brethren. Wherever they are. May your spirit and grace rest upon them. Yes, Lord. 
May they take up this challenge to overcome every demonic powers, demon spirit that contend with souls of men and women. That the yoke be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. And I bless you, Lord, for who you are and for what you're doing. May thy name be praised. May thy name be glorified. I pray, my Lord, that people will be set free because of the anointing upon their life. Anoint them with fresh oil. May they go to fulfill the will and the purpose of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you want to give your life to Jesus? Just pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I bless you, Lord, for saving my life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Find a good church and be part of it, and God will be with you. God bless you. Amen. The King is coming in glory and in majesty. Thank you for having time with the General Overseer. You can follow Reverend Russo Kobana on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-61-4965. Thank you, and God bless you.